Hello everyone. I know I look like Mickey Mouse with my earphones or headset. Uh, it's a bit cold here. Um, and this presentation is a part of our course titled English Presentation Skills. And today we will be talking about nonverbal communication. Now, verbal communication is something we do and we continue to do on a, a daily basis unless we have some uh, speech problems or hearing problems and so on. But apart from verbal communication, we also have nonverbal communication. Research shows that we do not only understand or we do not only hear, see, um, or understand and interpret verbal messages, but also we make use of uh, some human acts or human um, qualities, futures, to understand and to interpret messages. So, in Turkey, as you know, we have many gestures and mimics and jests and so on, right? For instance, uh, my experience suggests that um, when uh, we spoke as Turkish speakers uh, within our groups, uh, we would, for instance, upon hearing a question, we would say, to suggest that we mean no. And this, I found out, was not meaningful to many Western uh, friends. Uh, or this, in many countries, uh, mean yes. Whereas in Turkey, we use and to say no. But these are very obvious. There are some other nonverbal behaviors, acts, or futures that um, enable us, us to pass on some messages. So today we will be talking about these. And I'm Ardarkan, as you know. Well, I hope. The slides I provide here will be of your benefit. And what I am trying to do with my uh, slides today are listed here. Now, at the end of this session, we will be able to list the kinds of nonverbal communication patterns. We will give examples of nonverbal misinterpretations for various types of nonverbal communication. We will talk about proxemics. I think you will enjoy learning about proxemics and kinetics and so on. We will give examples of gestures whose meaning varies by culture. And we will give some examples of nonverbal communication behavior in one culture that reflects the values of that culture. And in fact, we started to do that uh, as I started uh, my speech today. And finally, explain how nonverbal interpretations can be a barrier in intercultural communication. So, even if we uh, look at our classroom, um, I remember we have members, uh, students from many regions of Turkey, as well as we have friends from uh, Jordan, Azerbaijan, uh, Bosnia, um, 
<clears throat> Iran and Cyprus and so on. So uh, in that sense, the way we uh, pass our messages um, is also translated in this intercultural uh, atmosphere. In that sense, we cannot today, we cannot assume that our world is made up of uh, a, a monolith, uh, monolithic uh, culture. But we have a variety of cultures, even within our classrooms. So these are the objectives that we will try to accomplish today. There are different kinds of nonverbal communication behaviors. Uh, and we can communicate our ideas or feelings, and sometimes both. We can sometimes use nonverbal uh, communication uh, skills or types, behaviors, futures, to uh, make our verbal communication more impressive and more um, understandable. But we can communicate our ideas or feelings through facial expressions, for instance. We can show anger, we can show disgust, we can show happiness, fear, sadness, surprise, and contempt. Okay? So basically, in that sense, Let's tie it up to our uh, final work, which is, you know, presenting your classmates some materials. So you have to make sure that you uh, pass the correct messages through your facial expressions, okay? So you have to smile, you have to look happy, and so on, or the way you frown, or the way you uh, use your voice, use your um, uh, lips or eyes or eyebrows, you have to make sure that they do not give uh, certain negative uh, meanings. Um, by the way, I forgot to hook it up, so let me hook it up first. Sorry for this. Um, let me check if the system is working properly now. Sorry for this. I'm not really new in online teaching, but um, it was supposed to take um, days and weeks of preparation, but as you know, because of this coronavirus, we were uh, caught unexpectedly. So let me check if the system is working correctly now. Sorry for this. Well, it's funny though. So, smiling. The smile is the near universal gesture of friendliness. So, uh, in parts of Southeast Asia, for instance, like Indonesia, Thailand, and uh, so on, a person may mask embarrassment by smiling. So, when you feel, for instance, embarrassed, embarrassed in these countries, uh, so you just smile. In some Latin cultures, on the other hand, a smile may signal excuse me or please. So even when you consider the case of smiling, you have to note that there are cultural differences between how people smile and how other people perceive uh, people smiling. If you compare Japanese and American speakers uh, in terms of how they smile and how they interpret smiles, you will see that Japanese tradition favors reserved emotional expression. For instance, in photographs showing American women, housewives, for instance, American wives are usually shown as smiling at their husbands, whereas Japanese wives are rarely shown smiling. 
United States uh, officers or officials or employees or personnel greet strangers with a smile. So they um, will, as you approach, they will start smiling and they will, they will say, hello. But Japanese clerks must not uh, do that. They must learn to do so. It is not within their culture to smile at people they do not know, even at work. Well, that doesn't mean that Japanese, the Japanese do not smile, they smile. But oftentimes, the uh, Japanese smile to disguise, to disguise their negative emotions, such as embarrassment and anger. Because public display of negative emotions in Japan is considered rude and incorrect. So in Japanese culture, if you feel bad, if you feel weak, if you feel angry or sorrowful, you are not supposed to show your feelings to others. You have to keep your negative feelings inside and to yourself. In contrast, in the United States, for instance, uh, you, uh, to a certain extent, you are more free to uh, share your uh, negative feelings with others through um, verbal or nonverbal messages. So, a Japanese person's smile may not mean the same as an American person's smile. What about the case of our country? Or as I've mentioned before, some of our friends come from various countries. So we should uh, all consider um, when and how we smile and how we interpret others' smile. Well, we cannot always use verbal messages. We cannot always talk or sometimes we are not audible. In some situations, in that sense, words cannot be used. Let's think about a very noisy manufacturing facility, such as a factory or a crowded classroom in which hundreds of students are uh, naturally making noise. So, oftentimes, in such situations, communicators might use uh, gestures by using their hands to replace spoken images or they may start uh, for instance uh, using their facial expressions another example is when communicators who do not share a language try to make themselves understood with gestures so um, when for instance uh, a foreigner who um, is not able to understand you and you are not able to understand him or her, um, naturally we first start raising our voice as though if we speak louder, we will be more uh, easily understood. Of course, that is not correct. We, just because uh, we raise our voice doesn't guarantee that uh, we will be understood because the person, the interlocutor, the person we are talking to is uh, uh, is able to hear us, uh, but cannot speak our language or the language we speak. So in uh, such a case, uh, we start using um, gestures and mimics and so on. And when we present our material, for instance, if we um, feel stuck if we cannot really uh, start um, telling um, what we are really trying to tell we tend to as presenters um, use our gestures and mimics more so oftentimes we interpret it uh, as interpret the situation as a as an act of um, as an act out of um, despair or panic but it is simply um, a, 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 a sign of um, trying to be 
uh, meaningful, trying to reach the audience. But nonverbal messages, signs, for instance, are arbitrary in nature. In Japan, for instance, the cherry blossom is a symbol of the samurai because it is beautiful, blooms early and dies soon. But if you think about it in our culture, the cherry blossom refers to uh, springtime, uh, birth, uh, joy, and happiness. Um, so there are uh, different uh, meanings attributed to uh, the same messages. The color red, for instance, is a symbol for Christian charity and communism and in that sense class conflict. But in Turkey, the color red is associated with national feelings such as nationalism, love for the flag and the military. Well, in 1992, uh, something uh, very unique happened. Um, this uh, was important because it showed that, what I'm going to tell in a, in a second or so, uh, showed that uh, new signs appear uh, daily. So we have more and more signs in our cultures. So anyway, in 1992, Jeremy Irons, an actor, uh, used a red ribbon, um, which was later called the Red AIDS ribbon, uh, which was the idea of a New York group, Visual AIDS, to bring attention to the AIDS epidemic. So starting with this uh, event, more and more uh, people started to use uh, ribbons of different colors to uh, uh, catch uh, people's attention to uh, health problems or social problems and so on. So not only we have new words or expressions uh, coming into use, but also nonverbal messages. For instance, let's say 10 years ago, this uh, roof topping was not used in the United States, but today, even in Turkey, it is mainly used by teenagers to uh, pass a certain message across. Are all symbols fine? No, not all symbols are universally accepted. Uh, what is commonly called the swastika in the United States and Europe, for instance, the one you see at the top, it is the uh, symbol of um, uh, Germany uh, and Germans during World War II. Um, it has long been understood with other uh, meanings in other parts of the world. For instance, the one you see uh, below is also a swastika, an Asian one, a Hindu sign of peace, which has been in use for more than or around 5,000 years. So Hindus are, you know, uh, the, the swastika uh, at the top is illegal to be used in many countries in Europe. So uh, Hindus are protesting Germany's move to ban the use of the swastika in the European Union, suggesting that uh, swastika is uh, culturally an important asset of their belief system by and large. So when we make use of certain symbols, uh, verbal, symbolic, like you see in these uh, flags, or nonverbal, you have to make sure that um, these symbols are fine. Imagine, let's imagine for a second, imagine being on your way home and being stopped by a friend who wants to talk to you. You feel like to say, well, I don't have time for you, but obviously you can say so out of kindness. You don't have to say these words, of course, but you can communicate that meaning by using your body. You can slowly continue walking away by adding your verbal message. Well, 
I really have to go, sorry. And with this uh, mimic and so on. So in that sense, uh, you know, showing your time, your facial expression, your shoulders, you know, and uh, saying, you know, and stepping back, I really have to go. You actually use uh, nonverbal communication tools or skills and uh, proxemics and kinesics. So what is proxemics? Proxemics is um, the term given to the study of our use of personal space. So as you move away from your friend, it either means that you have to leave or well, there is the coronavirus, okay? So depending on the context, your moving away, stepping away means uh, many things. Um, for instance, North Americans in an elevator maintain personal space, okay? So there is like, uh, let's say, one or two meters um, distance between you and the next person. But in uh, an Arabic country, for instance, even if the uh, elevator is not full, um, you know, two Arabs may stand shoulder to shoulder because it is the expected and accepted behavior in their culture. So another uh, kinesics, uh, for instance, um, is uh, our gestures, body movements, facial expressions, and eye contact. Uh, that is to say our behaviors. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the distance between speakers and, you know, all these facial expressions and body movements and eye contact uh, have uh, certain values in communication. There is also what we would call artifactual communication, which refers to the messages conveyed through objects or arrangements of objects made by our own hands. It includes how we decorate our homes and offices, as well as uh, the you know, clothing we wear and our physical appearance with jewelry, tattoos, and body piercings. Um, even when you start um, uh, a presentation, for instance, how you put your notebook, your note cards, your uh, pen, your glasses, and so on, they, um, this arrangement is also observed by your audience and this gives them some information about you as a presenter another important aspect of for instance clothing or artifactual communication is the color the meaning of colors um, varies uh, from one culture to another for instance red is associated with anger in japan but life in the middle east Orange is used to show religiosity in Ireland, but it is used to show inexpensive products in the United States. And finally, the color purple refers to death uh, in Asia, whereas it signifies or it stands for royalty in Western countries. Olfactics is uh, another um, area of study it is the uh, study of smell now uh, smell is the only sense of human um, body linked directly into our limbic system which may be evidence of it being our most basic primitive sense for instance in all cultures women can detect odors in lower concentrations and identify them more accurately and remember them longer than man can. So um, here is the summary of our uh, presentation. There are more types of nonverbal uh, nonverbals you can make use of. Study them and make sure that use them in your uh, developing presentation um, skills. Thank you.